Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy, it's Wanda. Hi, Remember Wanda. Remember me when you were on Kiss FM? No, I don't, Wanda. You were the one that condoned cheating from the kids, and I used to actually really, really cheating. disagree with everything that you said on the radio. Cheating from the kids. Well, cheating I've been listening to you for the last two weeks, and of course, you always upset me. Oh, I'm sorry, Wanda. I can't imagine why they would have you on the air for as long as they do. Well, you listen. But um, oh. I thought you would have changed by now, but I see you haven't. Are we fighting? Yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, we are. Okay. I like your fight yeah. demeanor. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. But listen, when you get a chance, I would love for you to come to my church, Mount Mariah. It's in Queens. Are you trying to save me? <laughs> no, I can't save you. Are you the only to- one that can save you is God. Well, I have God in my life. I and, hope so. And Jesus, too. I hope so. Mm-hmm. So, anyhow, have a great night oh. at the, the, you know, at the um, Dons and Divas. Well, thank you, Wanda. All right. Have a lovely holiday. You, too. Bye. And a wonderful Festivus. All right, Philly, Delaware, here we go. 302-250-50. Philly, you got that? 302. Delaware, what? 302 250 Memphis, I would love to have you all here, but I realize we're brand new to the market, so you all are still kind of in shell shock. Like, who the hell is this on our damn radio? What the hell is going on? Yeah, we're on Memphis Power 99. Non-stop hip-hop, boy! (laughs) Shout out to Power, Power 99 in Philly as well. Shout out to everybody in South Carolina, Columbia, what's really good. We've known each other long enough. I expect that I'm going to see more than a handful of you all up in the party. I mean, if you've got, you know, family up here, that is, then why not come spend the whole Christmas holiday? You know, you always come to see your aunt in Brooklyn, have Christmas dinner with her. Now you have three times the reason to enjoy it because now you know me and we got the party on Thursday. It's just a matter of time before Nick Lachey stands up and his behavior is going to... He's going to be like King Kong. Rah! I'm going to be like, oh, Nick. Oh, I like you like this. Wow. Ah. All right, you guys. Keep it where you got it. I mean, um... Yeah, sure. Keep it where you got it for the remainder of your programming. I love you for listening today. Take care of each other. Bye bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye. Good night. Program complete. All right, everybody. It's going down. The bonus hour. The bonus hour of the Wendy Williams experience is coming up next. I'll be taking your phone calls about, um, you know, whatever you want to talk about. You want to call regarding advice or. Or you want to gossip, so on and so forth. So keep it where you got it. I got a bunch of things to bring to the table. This guy won the $73 million Powerball, and everything's going downhill from there. The law, the drugs, the child neglect, the whole cra- I mean, it is just going down. Plus, now it is just us in New York City. I would love to get more into this transit strike. Like, like what the hell is really good? You know, what is good? Can we please uh, get some phone calls from some bus dri- uh, bus drivers and and whatnot, some of the commuters? How are you all going to um, weather this? And furthermore, I need three more people to ride in the car with me <laughs> <laughs> during the strike. I will be leaving. Uh, I'll pass you by on Route 3. I'll pick you up over there in the Target parking lot right there in Clifton. <laughs> we can do this. You pay for the gas. I'll drive. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to... How are we going to survive? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it where you got it. The bonus hour of the Wendy Williams experience coming up next. 107.5 WBLS New York. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. Y'all, what's up? This is Charlie Wilson. This is A. Marie. What's up? What's up? This is Eric Benet. What's up? This is Shanice. Yo, what's up? This your boy, M.H. Marcus Houston, and you're listening to my girl, the beautiful Miss Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams experience. I like the boy. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. 
guy with the Powerball is crazy. He won a quarter of a share of... Um, welcome to the bonus hour, by the way, everybody. Happy holidays. <laughs> quarter of a share of a $295 million lottery jackpot. This is back in 2001. His portion of it was $73 million. Apparently, he was like a kind of down on his luck guy with a bit of a criminal past, you know. Um, but at the time that he won the Powerball, you know, he there was no criminal activity going on. He was able to freely collect his money and put his life of crime in his past. Three months later is when, um, oh, and he had a variety of health problems with no medical insurance. You know, he was laid off his job in April of 2001. And... Um, you know, I guess he was a bit of a hustler, even while working. So, shortly after April of 2001 is when he hit the Powerball. Three months later, Lady Luck intervened. And he bought seven, the way he did it is he bought seven $1 Kentucky Powerball lottery tickets and ended up winning the $73 million. So, you know, he, I'm rich, I'm rich, rich, rich. You know, he was bragging to everybody. He took the lump sum payout after taxes, which was actually two, uh, $29 million. Well, people are saying that, you know, he could have easily collected a million dollars a year if he had decided to invest most of the winnings. But instead, he went on a wild spending spree, blowing more than $12 million in the first year alone. A million dollars a month. He paid a, he paid one hundred thousand dollars on uh, to have a New Year's Eve wedding for himself and his girl Shauna in Hawaii, and spent a million dollars on luxury cars, including a two hundred fifty thousand dollar Ferrari convertible for his wife Shauna. He bought a two hundred fifty thousand dollar Lamborghini Diablo for himself, and he bought. Um, a third car, which is a $240,000 Bentley. He bought a, a his and a her, so he bought two of those Bentleys. He also gave a $30,000 golf cart to somebody. He bought three thoroughbred horses to run in the Kentucky Derby. He bought a share in a private jet. He bought three homes, including a mansion in Florida and lots of jewelry. Um, jewelry like a $90,000 seven carat diamond ring for his woman Shauna and a $78,000 gold and diamond wristwatch for himself and the glittering lifestyle was actually a mask for a really ugly drug problem um, the Palm Beach police were called and the, the officer that was called Jennifer Prendergrass says that she was shocked when she entered his bedroom on November 4th after the state welfare workers investigated for child abuse and they were called in and this is what she says I immediately saw filth there were days worth of food in the room syringes were laying out in the open for anyone to be stuck one was on a Mountain Dew can next to the bed and Shauna his fiance turned wife admitted that she and he frequently locked themselves in their bedroom and used illegal drugs and both Dave and Shauna have hepatitis during the search through the house the police found a small tin container with white and brown substance which proved to be cocaine and heroin Four days later, this dude and his wife were booked and put in jail for drug and child neglect charges. They were released on bail the following day, and their court date has not been set, but the judge is there to t determine the next chapter in this man's life. Wow. 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 He got that wow. money and lost his mind. So how are you all's holidays going? I would love to talk to you on the telephone. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Hello. 
Um, I was calling you because um, you were just talking about the King Kong movie. Yes. It is Adrian Brody because I'm looking in Star Magazine right now and it is Adrian Brody. They gave it a two and a half stars. I got to tell you something. Uh, yeah, I would give it a two and a half. You know what? I just, I, I went because my son wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And it was three hours. I could see where they could have easily cut that down to two hours. I was so impatient. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And, and when when I went, I took him to a two o'clock show on Saturday afternoon, knowing that we had the Christmas party with a purpose. And the call right. time for the jocks was seven o'clock at night. We didn't get out of the movie until five o'clock. <laughs> By the oh, time God. I got home, you know, gave him his dinner, you know, prepared him, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I don't like to push him off on, you know, other people giving him his shower and, you know, not getting him ready for bed. Even yeah, if it was my, a long movie, though, three hours. Was my goodness. Exactly. And then I yeah. had to get myself together for the Christmas party with the purpose. I was so done. But Adrian Brody, I had never looked at him in that kind of way. Right. But after seeing him in that movie, he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> but I also had a question for you, Wendy. Did, um, have you um, gotten uh, the latest Star magazine? Mm-mm. Which one? Because they have a um, picture. Of, of course, the cover has like the tackiest couples of 2005. But inside, they have an article about Janet Jackson and about how she's canceling shows. And they have a picture of her, and she's gotten so big. Wendy. No, I've seen it. But there's also a recent picture of her. Taryn was just looking at it. What? What was that? What award show is that, Taryn? From the American Music Awards. From the American Music Awards. Right. They said that she canceled for the Billboard Music Awards on December 6th. And then she was supposed to um, host the after party at the MGM, and she canceled for that, too, because she's a little uh, Heavy. self-conscious about her weight. Yeah, uh, Taryn, that might have been last year's Billboard, I mean, American Music Awards, because the American Music Awards just happened, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, this one says the Billboard Music Awards, and the picture that they have of her, she looks like she's um, working out. Yeah. She's about I, to go work out. She has, like, a red the, sweatshirt and on. And the hat on, like Paddington Bear. No, she doesn't have a hat on. She has braids in her hair, actually, and she's walking with, it looks like she has a cell phone <clears> in her hand. Oh, she okay. has a red sweatshirt on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know how Janet is. Janet gains weight in between, and then right. she loses it right away. So that is it's one. Crazy how big she got. <laughs> yeah, but it's crazy how good she's going to look on the other side. Yeah, I'm rooting for her. <laughs> yeah, she she uh, has that thing about her. I guess between you know she's got a stiff workout regimen, a great plastic surgeon. She'll be fine. Right. Yeah, she'll be fine. Wendy, I also meant to tell you that your brother, um, Tommy. Yeah. He works at uh, the school where my brother works at. He's a custodian worker there. My brother works there. He said he's like one of the coolest teachers there. Yeah. Yeah. That's my brother. Yeah, so that was it. So you have a good day, Wendy. Okay, and thank you for calling. Happy holiday. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Um, hello? Yes, yeah, so that was it. Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Turn your radio down, though, okay? Thank you for calling. Happy holiday. You, yeah, you got to turn your radio down. Hello? Yes, hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hey, what's going on? Hi, I was calling because I got tickets to the Dons and Divas, but mm. I actually got them online. So okay. I want to know how do the people that got it online find out where it's going to be at? Well, when do you get your actual physical tickets? I've never ordered tickets online before. I don't know how that works. Actually, I got the printout and it said that you need to bring that with a photo ID with your confirmation number on it that we won't be getting tickets in the mail. There, No, 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 you won't. But isn't there a telephone number on, on your photo printout, on your printout? No. Nothing there. So I wanted to know, is there a number that I could call or... Yeah, hold on a moment and um, we're going to take your information behind the scenes. I okay. don't know how any of this online stuff works. I swear. <laughs> I ordered a couple of things online before I had to use somebody else's PayPal account. Then there was a problem. The person that I, and from eBay, there was a problem with um, the post. It was just so much. It took like three weeks for me to get something that they said, you know, I will have in like four days. And I said, I'll never order online again. Just, I just can't even take it. I just, oh my God. But with the tickets, I'm not sure how it works. Yeah, take her information and then like Nicole will call her. So Christina Applegate's career um, is hot like fire, and her soon-to-be ex-husband's um, career, Jonathan, his career is lukewarm. And after four years of marriage, he's just unbelievably jealous of her. You know, she went on to do Sweet Charity, and, you know, she's a little Hollywood it girl. And, and, and you know, she's 33, he's 36. They married for four years. They have no children. But... Uh, his career is lukewarm, and so it's a classic case of jealousy. So, you know, she can't take it anymore, the divorcing. It's too bad. 
And they say Richie Sambora and Heather Locklear, don't believe her trying to tell you it's all good, you know, and, and, you know, we're together and we love each other. People are saying that it's really going down with them. They are really on the fast track to nowhere. They've been married for 11 years. Heather Locklear, who's been a friend in my head since TJ Hooker, um, and then Dynasty, and, and all through. We were pregnant at one point together. She went on and delivered Ava, and I had a miscarriage at five months, but she was one of the girls who was pregnant at the same time, and whenever I'd see pictures of she and Ava, and, you know, before I was able to, you know, have little Kevin, I would just not, I was I was happy for her happiness, but I, I just could not look at the pictures of them in the tabloids, like running around and, you know, all like that. I remember, because I had my miscarriage at five months, and she was able, you know, she went on the extra four months, and I just couldn't, I, I was friends with her, and I wished her well, but I just couldn't. I thought our kids would grow up together, you know. At that time, I found out, I asked, I knew I was having a daughter, and, you know. Uh, anyway, so she had that show, show LAX, and it was only on for a moment, and apparently, you know, she moved to New York to, you know, to do some filming and whatnot, and Richie was was the one home, and he said that he was not going to be going out on tour, and they were all about the family. But then Heather's here in New York, and he wants her to have another baby, and she's 44, and he wasn't even at her 44th birthday party, but Tommy Lee was there, you know, her ex-husband. <laughs> and... That kind of made the red flag go up to her as she doesn't want to have any more children. She feels as though it's going to take her out of the position of taking the sexy roles that she's known for having. But Ava didn't, you know, if the real reason is that you don't want to have another baby because, of you know, having another baby is risky to a 44 year old body. Then, you know, I understand that. Or that she might not snap back and be sexy afterwards the way we know her for being, you know, size two, you know. But, um, you know, I just... And then he's getting ready to go on like a seven-month tour. He's going on this, this tour with Bon Jovi. And uh, they're calling it the Have a Nice Day Tour, which leads me to believe... <laughs> Did John Bon Jovi let Richie <laughs> name the tour? Is that a, you know a secret little dig to have to my friend Heather? In my head, I picture that she has a whole lot of Hollywood girlfriends, so she'll be fine. She's one of those girls that loves other girls, and I'm not talking about in a lesbianic way. Ow! Like she's one of those girls who loves girls, you know, and her friends are probably really supportive. In my head, this is what I think. I don't think that she has any black girlfriends at all. I don't even think she has a black maid. Mm -hmm. But she's a friend in my head. Only in my head. Like, I know, you know, I know it couldn't be anymore, Heather. <laughs> I wish you well, though. You'll be fine. Just don't make the same mistake that Demi Moore made. Thinking that a 27-year-old man is really going to give up everything to sit at home and eat popcorn and help you raise your daughter, and he's not going to want any children of his own. I was talking about Demi and Ashton earlier. People are saying that that's uh, quite the situation going on over there. Mm, she's real bossy broad, needs all the you know spotlight on her. They, they over-talk each other, and Demi always wins, you know, um... She tells us she cuts him off in the middle of his sentences and goes on about her own thing. She's got a movie coming out in the skincare line. And, and, you know, he's got his sitcom coming out on the WB. And apparently recently they had a dinner party at their house. And Ashton's talking about his sitcom. And, and Demi just chopped in from nowhere and starts talking about her cosmetic line and her movie. And, you know, all the things surrounding, you know, Demi Moore World. And the guests at the dinner party were in an awkward situation because clearly they saw some tension there like oh my gosh oh, yeah what is going on what do we do do we look at the ground do we push our peas around our plate do we you know excuse ourselves and go to the bathroom or do we intervene what do we do and then she wants to approve of all of his female love interests and all of the females, not just the love interests, but all the females, like like when he does movies and things like that. I, I don't know him for doing anything except for, hey, car, where are you? <laughs> but, um, you know, now he's got this show coming out on the WB, so he'll be, you know, on the set with that. You know, she and she also insists on traveling with him when he travels like one of those, you know, you're not going to be left out of my sight. And she doesn't like his friendships with Wilmer and, you know. 
Danny from the 70s show. But, you know, they're young guys. You know, young, I mean, you know, young guys hot and popping around Hollywood, single, yada, yada, yada. He's married. She's trying to turn him into, you know, the type that pops popcorn and, and watches, you know, old Greta Garbo movies at home. And and what insiders are saying is is that it's turning out where he is more like her fifth child than her partner in life. <laughs> and I give this no more than 18 months from today. No more than 18 months from today. And I don't even talk about babies because eventually, you know, when he decides to grow up and at this point, why bother? He's 27. He's wealthy. He's, you know, got celebrity. You know, there's there's a bit of a... Uh, Vodio do, I guess that that still has to be done. Testosterone. Yeah, they would have been better off dating a bit, fighting and breaking up and getting back together and dating a bit, and then you know he could come to his senses when he's you know thirty three. After he's gotten everything out of his system or most of it, and more of an appreciation for the home life, or she could always put on some poom poom shorts and get out there and and, and run with him. But she doesn't want to do that because Hollywood's not new to her. I mean, more, you know, we were introduced to her. She was, what, 15 years old on General Hospital. She's been there, done that, wrote the book, put the movie out. You know, the whole bit. So, you know, I mean, it's tough. Probably just settling in now that, you know, a nag is a nag. Whether whether it's a rich, good-looking, well-preserved Hollywood nag or, you know, a nag from Main Street and Main Street, USA. Mm-hmm. A nag is a nag, a hag is a hag, and the same old coochie is the same old coochie. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, what makes it worse is that it's bossy coochie with four kids trying to make me the fifth. It's not even like, it's not even like a, a, a hot and popping type relationship, you, you know, where you can run around the house naked and all that other kind of stuff. She's got real responsibilities. I can't do that. Rumor has a recital tomorrow. (laughs) This is her senior year in high school. I have got to be there. You know? I mean, it's got to turn a guy off, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So what are we going to do? At this time, all buses and subways are running and are not expected to be impacted until Tuesday morning. Well, we got less than 24 hours at the earliest, they say. Traffic and roadway limitations, including the Hove Lane and commercial vehicle restrictions, are not affected as of right now. Alternate side of the street parking remains in effect um, through today. And all New York City schools are operating on normal schedules for today. But... And all the buses are as well. But tomorrow when we wake up, there's a whole other thing that can be going on. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go to the phone, see who's talking. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? It's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Hi. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was calling you. Um, first off, I wanted to find out um, the information for the Party for a Pack. Um, what's the website that you would go to to submit about the family? Oh, WBLS.com. You're talking about um, describe to us our uh, your family, um, and then you win the family four-pack for a color purple. Oh, okay. Yeah, submit that at WBLS.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, are you giving any more tickets away? Uh, no, I don't have any tickets to give away today. I tell you, the party is virtually sold out. Is it? And um, by the way, um, I just got a note from Nicole um, in the pink room that people who ordered on PayPal will receive an email with party information. Your confirmation number is your ticket into the event. Oh, okay. So for those of you who ordered on PayPal. Okay. Now, now you, do you, you want to get tickets? Yes, I do. I live in Connecticut, so I, I have the information in Hartford where we would go to to get the ticket. There you go. So, okay. So you gonna you gonna give that a call? Yes. Okay. Very well. So then I'll see you at the party. All right. All right. Take care. Don't Thank forget you. to get a car service or, or be with somebody who's not going to be drinking. You know, uh, Martel X and O in abundance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Yep, because the Martell brown juice will be flowing. Hey. <laughs> exactly, China. Hello. <laughs> huh? Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, Wendy, you know what I want to ask you? I know it's probably old news, but on my trip to Florida, I got my hands on that New York magazine. Uh-huh. And I want to know, please... How in God's I know, the name picture, could you the have picture. allowed that picture to be taken of you? <laughs> that I mean, I didn't even see your hands, and it looked like you got brown juice in one hand and a crack pipe in the exactly, other. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That is oh, so God. God. And that, that was an issue about Jewish people in Hollywood. You know some old Jew going to read that and see your picture and have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but by the same token, if he read the article, he's got to be seduced into wanting to listen to this mess. Yeah, but you're looking like your eyes looking like that. Those people from that movie, Carnival of Souls. I know. You know what? It looks like I've been brown juicing and, and, and mainlining for, for 48 hours. And oh, you're looking like Claudia Barry on that Sweet Dynamite album. <laughs> I mean, you look like Carnival oh, she's of Souls. Me back. How could, she's how, what'd your family back. say? Um... What did they say? What did they? You know, I don't discuss things like that with my family. I know they got the issue. I know they saw the picture. I, I don't, I don't discuss that with them. You know, because they'd have a stroke looking at that picture. Yeah, but they have a stroke listening to the content right. of this radio show. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. But I love the article. Love you. Thank you, and bye. I love, I love you for listening. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that was one of our AARP people. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote hello. everything down. You know? Yeah. Hello. Hey. Hey. It's Wendy Williams. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Hi, how are you? Hi, Wendy. Yes. Oh, I just wanted to tell you, you look fabulous at the party Saturday. Oh, well, see, that makes up. For- <laughs> Thank you. Girl, uh, we were the teachers sitting right across from you where we asked permission if we could approach you. Oh, you all were silly with that. You all were digging in that food. I saw you all have big plates girl, of food. We, we were just teasing because we did not want Big Kev to be backing us up, but I just wanted to tell you, girl, you look good. Thank you. You're always talking about wait, wait, wait with your little tiny self. Thank <laughs> And, and also, just one other thing. You what? were the only one that sat and mingled with your people. I mean, come on. I mean, Steve passed by and let us flash. But you sat and you took pictures. And, and I just want you to know we really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you for appreciating it. All right, then. You have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. See, that phone call came right on time <laughs> after the heroin <laughs> shoot picture. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Oh, by the way, you know what? Shout out to my young friend, Little Miss Nana. Mm-hmm. You know, she's in Nork right now performing in a secret location. The the mayor of Nork, Sharp James, has summoned Chris Brown and Little Nana to perform Hello? for kids. Uh, I'll be right there for the holidays. Okay. Uh, tonight in a secret location in Newark and then tomorrow she's flying out to meet little Bow Wow. They're cutting something or another together and then she's going to be part of his tour. So little Miss Nana in Newark, New Jersey is doing big things and and shout out to you Nana and happy holidays to you and shout out to your father Seven and all your cronies that you go to school with. Hi, how are you sir? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. My name's Anthony Myers. Hi Anthony. How are you? I'm a screenwriter. I met with Artie before. Oh, you're the one that went to Tufts. Yeah. That wants to do the screenplay of the book, Wendy Brings the Heat. Exactly. Well, you know, I got to tell you, um, it all sounds great. Yeah. The, the, but the thing right now is is that I, I've got a lot on my plate. And sure. what I, what, um, you know what? Email me. Wendy okay. at the, Wendy at the Wendy Williams Experience dot com. Okay. I did try that before, but I didn't know if it went through. Well, it did. You know what, Taryn? My emails haven't been printed in at least eight weeks. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. yeah, email me. And don't forget to include your telephone number and stuff. I'm going to call you behind the scenes because that sounds like a really fun project. Fabulous. Once things uh, slow down um, a bit here, um, you know, like the party and, and stuff. And I was trying to, you know, put the finishing touches on my book and everything. So, but that, Wonderful. that sounds really fun. Yeah, I'm really excited. And I, I've, I've done a lot of... A lot of interesting screenplays that just get real edgy and raw, and, and I want to bring it raw for you. So. I, I, I love that. I, well, I love that idea. We can get a few nights over at the Beacon Theater. Yes, exactly. And turn it out. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. Wonderful. Well, I'm so glad that I reached you. I'm surprised that I reached you. Yes. But um, p- have fun at Don to Divas. I was hoping to go, but... Uh, you know, but listen, please do uh, make sure to email Wendy at the Wendy Williams experience dot com. Include your telephone number and all that other kind of stuff. I because I, you know, given your information, you know, off and now I don't have it. But Wonderful. Uh, but and I'll send that to you. I'll send that to you tonight. OK, very well. All the best to you. Happy holidays. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. And it won't be retrieved until February. Yeah.
of 2007. <laughs> oh, boy. What do we need? A secret code or something like that to get into my emails? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hi. Hello? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing fine. How are you? Hi, Wendy. This is Marianne. Hi, Marianne. It's snobby Marianne, everybody. <laughs> Marianne, do you uh, ride the iron horse? No. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> How dare me. <laughs> no, What's going I don't on ride the iron horse. What's I going haven't on? heard any more about it either. Yeah. yeah, and you could give a rat's behind. Uh, oh, yes, I could, because that still affects traffic. Exactly. <laughs> how are Lindsay, you, how that's are, not nice. How are you and your Bentley going to possibly stroll the boulevard? I hope I can stroll your Dons and Divas. Wendy, uh -oh. I've had the worst problem. What's the matter? I was in the hospital for three days. <gasps> oh. Okay? There he is. Now, in getting to the hospital, I had a tr um, terrible experience with the EMS. Oh, no. I had to go barefoot. What? They didn't want me to get my coat. <laughs> they left my pocketbook in the window. What? And in and, and response to that, my pocketbook got stolen Thursday. Oh, I no. Not with Thursday. the American Express yes, black card day. inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. All my cards. Oh. I, I stopped payment on the card. But worse than that... I had my ticket in there. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. There's party. going to be a criminal at my party. I'm going to try to be a criminal because nope. I'm, I, I want, Wendy, I still want to go. I purchased the ticket and I didn't want to do that. I, I kept waiting. This is one of those very elaborate mail. Foxy Brown stories. But uh, <laughs> I didn't get one, so I went out and purchased the no, ticket. Marianne, I know she's not pulling Foxy Brown. <laughs> hmm? Marianne? Yes. <laughs> Who are, you Wendy? Gonna, who are you going to bring with you? Um, a, a girlfriend of mine. Well, see, the thing is, Marianne, is that I don't have any pair. I don't have any tickets to give away today. I haven't well, given. You might have something for me, don't you? We haven't given. Come to think of it, it's been a really slow day. Yeah. I know you haven't anything. given away. Anything. I haven't given away not one thing. I know. Yeah. But I'm hoping this could be the first one. I I don't have it. If I don't have anything, then then the prize department doesn't have anything. I mean, you know. I don't have anything, Marianne. I'm sorry you to hear about that. something for me. But look, why were you in the hospital for three days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Foxy, I mean, Marianne, why, yeah. were you, why were you in the hospital for three days? Mm -hmm. I fell. Mm -hmm. And you I wanted fell. me to fall, too. Fall for it. No, no, no. Oh, okay. This is the truth. This is that. How did you fall? How did truth. you fall? What happened? Hmm? Yeah, what happened? How did you fall? <laughs> Mm. This part you're not going to believe. Okay, try me. I fell out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I fell out of bed one day. Marianne. And that, yes, I really did. That I big, fell out of bed. royal, regal bed of yours, eight yeah, feet up. You I need... fell out of bed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And you hit your heads on head on what? I don't know what I hit my head on, but I, 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 I fell right during the... When Steve Harvey came on... And that was that was it. That was it. When I Steve, fell. Oh, so you fell, you fell in the morning. Yeah. And what happened? Your hand hit the Waterford crystal. It broke on the floor, <laughs> and you cut yourself, and you had to call no. for one. No, Bam. it didn't quite Run. get that bad. No. I didn't cut myself. Marianne, a woman like you wasn't in bed with somebody. Unfortunately, not at this time. Oh no. And I can't say that I fell out during any activities either. Yeah. When's the last time you had sex? <laughs> When's the last time? Yeah. Last week. Oh. Do you have a regular man or do you have what, what do they call a sex buddy? I have a regular man. Yeah, I'm talking about like a boyfriend. Like that. Um, yeah, so I have a regular man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that's what you meant. Yeah, how long have you been seeing him? Uh, just about a year. Yeah. I, did you get him a Christmas gift? Not yet. <laughs> What are you planning yeah. on? What are you planning on getting him? Um, probably some type of electronic device. Yeah. What What is your uh, What is your budget for that? Because I mean, it's it's been a year. I mean, he wasn't Don's and Divas worthy or anything like that. Yeah. What uh, What What's your budget for him? Mm, I don't know. It depends on what I see out there. Yeah. But I mean, it you really know, depends. But what What if it's a thousand dollars? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Maybe. No. I don't think so, though. Yeah, exactly. Well, what, I think about 500 maybe. Yeah, have you asked him for anything for Christmas? Well, I like jewelry. Oh, I bet you do. Yeah, he knows I like jewelry. Mm -hmm. so, so I hope I get a nice big piece. 
Wendy. Yes, Marianne. Your mind goes that way, doesn't it? <laughs> it's your terrible, isn't it? That way. Well, look, Marianne, I wish I can help you out, and I'm sorry to hear about you falling out of bed and yeah, you know, going to the hospital. I'm glad to hear that you're okay, though. Well, I am okay, and I'm still going to try to get me some tickets, oh. another ticket, All right. some way or another. I got that one from uh, the fur company. Oh, Demetrio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were and at now the... I can't even reach them to see if they have any more. That number you just gave about the 917-302 number, uh-huh. the mailbox is full without getting VIP tickets. Well, don't go on it. Let me give you Demetrio furs. Two... Yeah, I can get them again, I guess. They two... might have some. 212-695. Mm-hmm. Eight four six nine. Why don't you ask your um your man to get you the tickets? I don't even want him to know I'm going. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it won't be a secret, but you yeah. know, I'll tell him afterwards. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I win. Yeah. Well. I wish you luck, Marianne. Thank you, Wendy. And I appreciate Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening to the show and whatnot. But I made it to a party with a purpose, but I did not see you. Oh, my gosh, Mary. for you. It was fabulous. I would have loved to it have was. met you. It was very nice. Yeah, it was nice. I had a nice time there. I'm glad you did. All right. Well, but I'm going to still try to make it to Dogs and Beavers. Okay. Take we'll care. We'll see. Okay. Thank you, Wendy. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah. After dude hit the lottery, they even highlight did a highlight show on him on the Learning Channel to show how he's a glittering example of how somebody can change their life around for the better. Wow. You know, he's 50 years old. He's a former crook. His chick is a former ex-waitress, and now it's just terrible. The, the hepatitis, the needles, the, the fleet of cars. The, the kids are 15 and 7. How come the 15-year-old can't take it to the 7-year-old? Where do you see neglect in that? Get your behind in there and make him something to eat. And you, at 7, pour yourself some Fruit Loops. <laughs> I left you money over there. And both of you all call a cab and get to school. So a lot of times, like, when you think of, and, and I know I'm be, part of me is being facetious, but isn't that why you spread them apart like that? So that the 15-year-old <laughs> can then take care of the 3-year-old or the 7-year-old or whatever. Well, it's good parental guidance. Well, but... we're in the room doing drugs. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, isn't that, well, I'm just saying. When the guy was 21, he held up a Super America gas station. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Then he was busted for violating parole. And they kept him in jail for a total of 16 years. I don't know how that happened. Uh, at the time, he was paying $400 a month. He was jobless, dire straits. All of a sudden, he buys the Powerball and ba <clears throat> Money does not change people. It just brings out what was already there. If you were already, you know, whatever you already were is what the money will personify. That's all. If you were a selfish bastard then the money's not going to make you any better, you know. It's going to magnify. If you were an irresponsible tramp, you're going to blow through that money and, and you know. Mm. All righty, we have to take a break. We'll be back with the remainder of the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience here on 107.5 WBLS. The WBLS Christmas party was a party with a purpose. The people get hang out, get food. It was a really nice atmosphere. Grown and sexy people. It was excellent. I got a chance to meet a lot of nice people. Everything was really nice. Everything. A party with a purpose. Party definitely had a purpose. Special thanks to our performers. Hey, what's up? This is your man, Jaheen. This is Vivian Grant. I want to thank WBLS for inviting me to their party with a purpose. Thanks to all y'all who came out to party with a purpose. It was wonderful, and I can't wait to do it again. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, y'all. Also, special thanks to Guapale and Cameo. Our sponsors, the Department of Health, Razak, Jamaica Bid, and Preferred Equity Solutions. Along with a big thanks to you. All our WBLS listeners who came out to support WBLS was able to present 
day one with a check for $10,000. Spreading a little cheer for the holiday season and throughout the year. Oh, yeah, everybody in the WBLS staff, y'all really hooked the brother up. Thank you. We're 107.5 WBLS. Every day, all day. Good morning. Today's R&B and classic soul. This is your girl, Takara, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. I'll see you at Don's and Divas, Takara. So anyway, um, it's not looking good for Lou Rawls. I mean, you know, he's keeping up a brave face by, you know, saying don't count me out and stuff. But the doctors are saying that he's not expected to live much more. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, his situation at this point, he's being treated for lung cancer and brain cancer. And his conditions are pretty bad right now. And he's 70 and, you know. That's Mr. United Negro College Fund. He helped raise nearly $200 million for the United Negro College Fund. Mm-mm-mm. Julio Iglesias' father uh, just passed, Enrique's grandfather. He was a, a 90-year-old man who was a gynecologist. Mm-hmm. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. He married a 42-year-old Chippy, and they announced that they were expecting their second child together next year, 2006. So he was still shooting fully loaded. Mm-mm-mm. He was 88 when their first child was born. Exactly. Julio Iglesias has a one-year-old brother or sister. Wow. <laughs> How old is your brother or sister? Oh, two months. <laughs> Enrique's uncle is two weeks old. <laughs> Very splabuvian. <laughs> They say that Michael Jackson, speaking of Splabu, <laughs> you know, that's Michael's uh, alleged, according to uh, a Jackson family friend, uh, that is his term for uh, black people, Negroes. <laughs> Get those Splabus out of here. <laughs> so I've just adapted it because it sounds like such a funny word. And I just, you know, add my little endings. Very Splabuish, <laughs> Splabuvian. So they say that Michael is like putting his family into a panic. This could be part of Janet's weight. Because Janet thinks that he needs 12 months of rehab, according to sources in the Globe magazine. They say that um, they consider it a life or death situation. The family is in a state of emergency. They feel that Michael, over there in Byran, where he now lives is, uh, you know, destroying himself with prescription drugs. He's doing, he's up to, you know, that. And the intervention is being organized by Randy. And, uh, you know, the nannies are beside themselves. It's very sad. You know, between that picture of Jennifer Lopez smoking and the picture of Mariah Carey pumping gas... (laughs) Damn it, Mimi. I didn't even think you drove. I don't want to see you pumping gas. These are keepers. (coughs) Here's Mariah pumping gas. Pass that around. I need that back. (coughs) So they say that... um, They say that... uh, Oprah... Just needs one more thing, one more slip up from Dr. Phil. And they're saying that Oprah would drop him. Well, now she has Rachel Ray and everything like that. The thing with Dr. Phil, they're saying, is that um, Dr. Phil has had a firestorm of controversy around him regarding that, that weight loss program and, and just just a whole bunch of stuff. And Oprah firmly believes, they say, that her success comes with her honesty and her integrity. And if 
Dr. Phil wants to play the way he apparently has been, then they can't be in business anymore. I just read a review that the color purple is terrible. What? <laughs> yeah, they they gave it they gave it like a like a a half a star type thing. I is that a hater or are we so in love with Oprah that anything you do, princess, we love you. <laughs> I catch myself saying that you know about Oprah, but there's certain things like when our gene doctor came in today. If Oprah likes them, then I don't. I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to wear grandma jeans. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't really, when I think of Oprah, you know, I think of, you know, a lot of opulence and things like that. But in terms of, like, weekendy type gear, like, I don't want to wear the same velour two-piece that Oprah has. Pulling up all high and jacket all. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to wear the same jeans Oprah wearing it, you know. <laughs> The same evening gown, maybe. You, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying. The same fluffy slippers, the same... But uh-uh. If Oprah's wearing them, then that's the next best thing to mommy jeans. <laughs> and I'm not, and that's, that's the next thing to... You're not sexy, you just want to put on some jeans. Right. I mean, Oprah is... You're right. Damn. <laughs> In order for a person to be sexy to me, I have to be able to picture them having sex. I just can't. I just can't. I, just, I can't. I can't. I can't picture it. Not with anything. Not not with Tyra. Not with Stedman. I just. I just. I just can't. I just don't see that. Yeah. So because I can't picture her having sex, and I can't picture her O face, you know. Oh. <laughs> there's nothing sexy about her. I don't want to wear her jeans. Yeah, I'll get some. I want to go online, though. I copied down the jean lady from Saks Fifth Avenue came during advice hour. She was giving us great advice on jeans. And her bottom line is that you don't have to spend $300 on jeans, even though that's what they're selling at Saks. She was real honest. I liked her. Shamari Nelson. But I copied down the Oprah jeans information because I think I'm going to hot tail some down to my mother. <laughs> now, she would look great in Oprah jeans. I'm just not there yet. Yeah. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I'll be damned. Mariah Carey pumping gas. Jennifer Lopez smoking a cigarette. What the hell is the world coming? Steve. Here's Jennifer Lopez smoking a cigarette and Mariah Carey pumping gas. I don't even picture Mariah Carey driving. But she does it like a diva, though. You see how yeah, she's leaning? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's leaning with her Gucci yeah. shearlings and the whole bit. <laughs> but still, it's not right, right? It's no, it, it's not right, Steve. This is not right. <laughs> J-Lo, I know. She's sucking on that cigarette with her eyes closed like, ooh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that must have been someplace foreign. I don't know where she'd do it. So Rolling Stone had this article about Foxy Brown. I think it's worth repeating, you guys. Are you listening to this? So there's this writer. His name is Dennis he uh, he Heckerling. <laughs> and um, so he goes on to say that Foxy Brown last week said that she hasn't heard any voices for months and how she needs help somebody to tap out the beats on her shoulder when she's in the recording studio. He goes on to say, interesting. The issue is not <clears throat> her ability to hear at this particular point. This writer goes on to say, the issue is Foxy has not done anything remotely fascinating to move her to the mainstream a la Eve, Little Kim, and Queen Latifah. Well, he's got a point. He's got a, he's, he's got a point. I mean, Foxy was there before Eve. Foxy has had as good a chance as any of the girls. What do you think it is that kept her out of there? Like she never attitude. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Listen, you know who's to say these other girls don't have attitudes? True. Let me go on and talk about this though. He goes on to say in the article, even as Foxy allegedly goes deaf, there is no buzz being generated. No one has bitten but New York newspapers, and they give it only back page ink. Entertainment Tonight and Access Hollywood don't care. What makes Foxy look even worse, he goes on to say, is that even behind bars, little Kim continues to garner press from all mediums. You know what? Sad but true. 
people aren't talking about this on Entertainment Tonight E News Weekend with Jules Asner and the new guy who I hate. What happened to Patrick Stinson? And that's on Jules Asner, excuse me. Juliana DePandes. Jules Asner faded into the abyss since that stupid show that she had on <laughs> with Kimura. But, you know, I got to tell you something. They're absolutely right. I feel bad for Foxy. Yes. <laughs> Do we have the sound bite again? Yes, we do. Can we get that? Mm-hmm. Is it in the studio? No, I have to get it. Again. Okay. Can you get it in the next 30 seconds? Yes. Okay, hurry up. Okay. If you didn't hear the sound bite, then, then I'll play it for you. I believe Foxy's going deaf. She's got... She's starting to get that. Oh, no, I'm not laughing at it. It's nothing to laugh at. I mean, I talked about my own thing, you know. When I lost my... Uh, it's not totally lost, but it is worthy of the dramatic music, only she left the button. Hold on, I'll press it myself, and I'll tell the story. How is it labeled? Oh, okay. So, about, Anthony, what was it, about two years ago? Because you were my secret confidant here at work as I was going through it. Yeah. About two years ago, I woke up in the morning, and I had a terrible, terrible it wasn't really a coughing cold. It was this all up here between my eyes and my nose. And it was all in here. And I could not, you know, I just thought, you know, I'll get over it. And I, I my, there was a lack of smell. And, but I thought it was through, due to a stuffy nose, whatever. And I used my saline drip and stuff. And, and I ended up doing a lot of slurring. And Anthony, who works here at the radio station, Anthony's head of production, and he's in charge, like, when I go in and read commercials, and he'd give me my commercial copy, and I'm slurring. And I was honest with him. I said, Anthony, you know, I'm not drinking. I'm not doing drugs. I know this sounds crazy. I don't know what it is. And then he revealed to me that some people around here, you know, asked, you know, what was my situation? But... I was going through something. At the time, I thought it was... I went to get my teeth checked to see if maybe I was biting, you know, maybe I was biting on my teeth and that was the slurring. I couldn't even tell. And then as far as the smell, I didn't think anything of it except that I have a cold. It lasted for about a week when I came out on the other side. You know, and don't cry for me, Argentina, but I can't smell the way you all can. And consequently, I can't taste the way you all can. Like, you could be smoking a Marlboro in the same room with me, and I can't smell it. And I lie to you not. Things just happen. And I had to develop a, a, a new member of my, a couple of new members of my medical team. I had MRIs. I have an ear, nose, and throat specialist, the whole bit. And, you know, after going through a battery of tests, there was nothing in my brain. There was nothing in my pituitary. There was nothing, there was nothing that anybody could find. And after searching and searching and searching and, and crying and being upset because I'm losing one of my five senses and consequently a sick, uh, two of them actually because taste and, you know, and I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll lose some weight. The food won't taste to say remember Anthony I'd make the jokes about that and stuff but you know come out on the other side I wear the same perfumes that I wore before because I don't want to chance anything new because I can't smell it the way you can you can you can blow a fart right next to me and if I don't hear it I'm definitely not smelling it and and I the the, the main thing that made me just like cry and cry over it is, is that I wasn't able to smell when my son would wet the wet his diapers that was two years ago. And I, I would have to, like, literally put my hand in and feel for the moisture. And, you know, as he was going through the bed wetting thing, like, I wasn't able to smell. You know, I would have to touch it. And, you know, I'm not able to, like, smell, you know, crap, you know. Mm. But but I got a chance to smell what a newborn smells like. And I, and I, I know what baby magic smells like. And I, you know, I, and I, you know, some of the most endearing smells, I know what they are. I remember what great food tastes like. And it is what it is. And um, so I, I do. And that was my little secret that I just after I heard Foxy speak in this piece, I said, she's she's not lying. And a lot of you all I know were asking, you know, out loud to me and, you know, all over, you know, well, how, you know, how do you just wake up and all of a sudden you can't? Well, it happens because it happened to me. Right, Anthony? All right. Play that piece. Thank you all for coming and showing your support. In May 2005, my life was altered drastically. 
But I've discovered in your darkest hour, the confusion that shrouds your daily existence can become overwhelming. During the recording of my new album, Black Roses, I was diagnosed with sudden severe hearing loss. As time passed, an incredible anticipation of the album evolved and suddenly I became reclusive, privately suffering with the devastating news of my hearing loss. We take for granted the simple yet powerful words like, I love you, by our mothers, or the subtle, supportive words of an adoring fan. But I'm very appreciative of every kind remark, embrace, and prayer from my family, fellow artists, and fans. I have spent many confusing, agonizing nights crying in isolation and silence. To suddenly lose your hearing after 10 years as a professional artist, I question God, why me? But today, I stand before you blessed with only the voice of God in my ears as a vessel of inspiration. I have weathered the tumultuous storm with an abiding faith and irrepressible spirit. I am strong, resilient, and fortunate to undergo the necessary surgery to restore my hearing. Thank you, Dr. Benjamin Chavis, my second family, the Simmons, Russell and Kamora, Tyson Beckford, Deggy Fresh, my wonderful and amazing doctor, Laura Arias, my amazing attorney, Attorney Fleming, my mom, who I wouldn't even be standing here if, if it wasn't for you, mom, I love you. My brothers, Gavin, Anton, and Mouse, and BET, thank you for allowing me and affording me the opportunity to speak to my fans. Your love and support afford me the courage necessary to be successful in my plight. My anticipated triumph is a testament of faith in God's grace. In humble gratitude, I ask only for your continued prayers and compassion as I embrace the blessings of my journey. Thank you. Mm, say. Hang in there, Foxy. I hope the surgery works for you. I was sung that song also. It is what it is. All right, you all, um, I love you for listening. Keep it where you got it. Vaughn Harper's next with The Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Bye-bye. Yes, I am up next. The Wendy Williams Broadcast.